we make progress in life by continuing to move forward despite the pressure to cave in and even to give up. It doesn't matter how much book learning we've acquired or how much money we have. The deciding factor is finding the courage for us to persevere. And God rewards persistence in doing the right thing, even if the initial cost is great. So there's bound to be external pushbacks, even resistance when we're following his lead. So we can't expect the road to just be smooth and easy. There will be some moments where it will feel rocky and steep at times, but we mustn't lose heart. We don't have to persist and persevere all alone either. We have a God that's there at our side. He has ministering spirits to strengthen and assist in our journey. And we can ask for God's intervention to give us the strength we need to finish well and strong and to reap the rich rewards he's promised. 2 Timothy 2.1, let me leave you with this promise. So you, my friend, be strong, constantly strengthened, empowered in the grace that is to be found only in Christ Jesus. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that as we get into your truth, as we unpack tonight's focus, that your Holy Spirit is there to reveal what we need at this time and season individually. Father, you said your word will not return void. Your word will produce fruit. And Father, may that fruit just stir up in all of us, building our faith, bringing us to a place to make a decision to choose your very best. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Perseverance and persistence. It keeps the end goal in, in, in sight. Perseverance and persistence. Well, I've been covering a few Ps these past couple of weeks, and I just could not help myself. I wanted to talk about these as well and just go over another aspect of them. 2 Timothy 2, 3, and 6 reminds us that take with me your share of hardship. That's passing through the difficulties which you are called to endure. Do it like a good soldier. Um, this soldier uh, of Christ. So no soldier in active service gets entangled in the ordinary business affairs of civilian life. In fact, he avoids them so that he can please the one who's enlisted him to serve. And if anyone competes as an athlete in competitive games, he's not crowned with the wreath of victory unless he competes according to the rules. And a hardworking farmer who labors to produce crops ought to be first to receive his share of the crops. So join with me in suffering like a good soldier of Christ Jesus. This journey of life, it's a journey, all right. And sometimes it's not a smooth journey. But praise God, he's given us like a car, axles that can adjust, right? We can have, uh, you know, the essential equipment to be able to not have the full impact of those rocky pitfalls that come our way. He gives us the strength of the Holy Spirit to empower us, to surround us and assist us each and every step of our journey. But before we unpack a few more truths, I want to have you shout out to our facilitators, Tammy Johnson and Pat Dinkins, who are here to connect with you. Let them know you're, you're watching, give them your name, where you're calling from or watching, and then just be a part of the conversation in the chat. And also, remember to go to our website, www.cindydennis.org. We have coming up an event at Gum Springs Community Center first Saturday in May, and we hope that you can join us. The event is free, but you have to sign up to reserve your spot. So getting back to the topic of tonight, perseverance and persistence, keeping the end goal in sight. We heard about several buzzwords, 
Perseverance, for example. Let's just unpack what that means. The dictionary, Webster, says to persist in a state, enterprise, or undertaking in spite of counter influences. Persistence. And then not only counter influences, but opposition and even discouragement. And how about persistence? The Webster Dictionary says this, it means to stand firm and to go on resolutely in spite of opposition. So perseverance, you're seeing a pattern here, and persistence. You and I, we are called to perseverance. As followers of Christ, we can do it because we're empowered by the Holy Spirit. So we have been entrusted in life, he's given us power and authority, and he wants us to share the good news. And so we need to be steadfast and not give up because that's what the enemy wants. He doesn't, he doesn't want us to share that good news. He wants us to be so distracted with all that's happening around about us that we're not staying the course. We're not being mindful of our purpose that we have while we're still on this earth. 1 Corinthians 15, 58 says, Therefore, my beloved brothers and sisters, be steadfast and movable, always excelling in the work of the Lord, always doing your best and doing more than what is needed. Being continually aware that your labor, even to the point of exhaustion, mind you, in the Lord is not fruitful and it will not be wasted. It is never without purpose. You know, so we're in this journey, and as I just read, we're to be steadfast and movable. We're supposed to be excelling in this work that God has. And like an athlete, to excel in something, you got to train. How do we train? Well, put some ideas in the chat. It might be watching a program like this, studying God's Word. It might be journaling. It might be scripture memory work. God will give you the plan to prepare for the purpose he has for you to do. But there's training involved. Training also means avoiding certain things as well. When I was training in sports, there were certain things I didn't eat. I made sure I drank lots of water. Well, you and I as believers, I'm often mindful of what I am putting into the temple, to my spirit. I make sure that I am avoiding certain conversations or movies or things that would pull me away and would maybe muddle uh, the clarity of God's plan and purpose for my life. Because I realize garbage in is garbage out. So I'm, I'm mindful, just like I would my physical body. I love chips, but I know I can't live on chips. And so I have been discerning on eating right, sleeping, exercise, all those things to build up my human body. But I do the same for my spirit more so. So we are entrusted to share the good news. And as we are entrusted to share that good news, we don't have to do it alone. God gives us the power of the Holy Spirit. And with that guidance that the Holy Spirit provides, the wisdom, the all ability, he will be able to help us to accomplish and, and to take full advantage of the encounters that come our way. And God, he will help us not only to accomplish his purpose, but enjoy the journey along the way. Have you ever been with someone and the connection was so special? You found out you had things in common. You're, you're having this conversation and then to just make it really special for me. I love being able to share about the Lord Jesus Christ. Often, there might be an opportunity to pray for that person. Or my heart is just uh, getting all excited with, a, I can hear the Holy Spirit tell me to share the scripture or talk about that story. And when that encounter is done and finished, my heart is overjoyed by being a part of God's divine encounter. You and I, every day is a chance to participate in some divine encounters. When Jesus walked on this earth in the gospels, what was amazing to me was, it was he never saw it as an interruption. 
he made time for these divine encounters that came constantly his way. And as I look at life, and that's where perspective comes in, another P, I realize it's important to look at these opportunities, these divine encounters for a reason, for a purpose, and with the help of the Holy Spirit to be his vessel. Maybe it's just sharing a word of encouragement, but whatever it is, to be steadfast. But perseverance, persistence, it's important. Why? Because we need to be prepared. We need to be powered up. Jesus, he took time to get away with his God. He took time to pray and, and get things sorted out. And you and I, we have to do the same. We have to fill ourselves up. We need to realize that we can't live by bread alone, but by his word. That's how we live this spiritual life to its fullness. And so with that, you and I, we're called to be links in the chain that winds its way through human history from the first century until the return of Jesus Christ. We're a part of that story. I love the Bible project, how they often talk about the story. We're a part of that story. And it began and it will continue. And are we being persistent? And are we persevering through the journey? Our part, that story that we are to share with others. So with our faithfulness, we are entrusted with the good news of what God has done for us. What Jesus has done for us. We can share the authority, the gifts, the inheritance, the kingdom living, we can share that good news with other people. And God is wanting each of us to pay it forward. Just as we had received it from someone, we share it with the hopes that they will. I find that in discipling and modeling what that looks like, it's an example that will bring others to that place to want to do the same. And I encourage you tonight, what model and example are you showing others? Are you encouraging them with godly examples to be able to pay that forward? I know as a mother and when my children were young, I was surprised with what they picked up. In fact, even now I'll be talking to my daughter and she looks like her dad, but she sounds so much like me. And some of the characteristics, I'm amazed. And I'm like, am I really that way? They pick it up. And people around us will pick up our characteristics. Are we an example of Christ? Is his life, is his fruit being seen in and through us? To prepare ourselves, we need to be persistent to put God's word first place in our hearts. So think of that scripture that I just read in, uh, in Timothy, where it talked about, and let me read it again. Take with me your share of hardship, passing through the difficulties which you are called to endure, like a good soldier. So think about that. No soldier is in active duty gets entangled in the ordinary business affairs of civilian life. He avoids them so he may please the one who enlisted him to serve. If anyone competes as an athlete in competitive uh, games, he's not crowned with a wreath of victory unless he competes according to the rules. And lastly, hard working farmer, number three, who labors to produce crops. They ought to be first to receive their share of the crops. Three practical images to help us gain perspective. Because Proverbs 23, 7 says, as a man thinks, so is he. So God lays out in Timothy, and here's Paul writing to Timothy. He gives these three examples, right? The soldier, the athlete, and the farmer. And so Christian perseverance during difficult times, we have to gird ourselves up to be steadfast, to not give up. 
And uh, as believers, we are called to focus on service and obedience to Jesus Christ. And as we look at this example, here's Paul mentoring Timothy and preparing him to carry on with the work. He uses first the soldier. And the soldier, you know, when you think of a soldier, they're all about the final victory, right? We might lose many battles in life, you and me, but as long as we are persistent and following Christ, we will win the war because it's already been done, right? The battle's the Lord's, the victory is ours. It's already been won. We need to press in to be persistent in that well-doing. And then an athlete, it talked about in that scripture about the, the wreath, the trophy. So even though you and I, our bodies, our minds might ache as, as we are persevering uh, through the pains of, of the world, maybe we're being misunderstood or ridiculed. Maybe we're being, um, you know, ostracized. People don't want to be around us anymore because we're believers. But whatever it is, one day we will have new bodies. We'll be free of pain and suffering. But we need to be steadfast for the trophy, for the prize that is set before us. And for the farmer. That farmer plants, even though he might not feel like planting or she but plants that seed at the right time. This week, I planted my grass. Weather's fine. I didn't have time, but I made time. I prepared the ground for some weeks. Bernice's watching. She helped me in this. And so this week, I was able to get some, some seed planted. But I, I, I made the time. And a farmer makes the time. Because they're all about the hope of the harvest. And day in and day out, you and I, we have the opportunity to be persistent in study and praying. We need to be mindful of witnessing to those around us because there is a harvest, right? The harvest is plentiful. The laborers are few. We need to be mindful of our role as that laborers of God because one day that harvest will come. And we want to influence as many people as possible for the Lord Jesus Christ. And as I wrap up, we want to press on to the goal, right? Second Timothy 4, 8. So now a gift is waiting for me. The Lord will make me completely right with him. And that will be a crown which the Lord will give me on that great day when he judges people. He is the judge who is fair and right. He is not, he will not only give that gift to me, he will give it to all those people who love him and they will be happy to see him when he comes again. For you and I, as we press to the goal, there's a reward, rich rewards, a crown. And we can look with joy for what is to come as we are faithful, as we're anticipating meeting our Savior face to face in heaven. But we have to persevere. We have to face adversity while we're here on this earth. But as we stay the course, as we press on to the goal, as we persist in our daily efforts to be more like him, one day we will hear, well done, good and faithful servant. Enter into your eternal rest. I pray these words brought encouragement to you tonight persistence, perseverance, keeping the end goal in sight. You and I were on a journey. We're a part of that story. And when we made Jesus the Lord of our life, he has invited us to participate. So make a choice and a decision tonight that you will persevere, that you will be persistent, that you will have that perspective, that God perspective to be that leader that God has called you to be. And I am confident that as you ask, it shall be given. And as you seek, you will find. And as you knock, those doors will be open to you. Have a blessed night and thank you for joining us.